I'm Thomas Sandgard. I'm the founder and CEO of Sinex. Sinex is a fast-growing medical device company, as Dave said, right, uh, right in the middle of, of Colorado. And uh, we are we publicly traded, so we got to do this first. Uh, you know, you have to the right to remain silent, etc. <coughs> so. Um, Sinex went public through a reverse merger, therefore there, there is a holding company and now consists of uh, three subsidiaries. Uh, the one to the left, Sinex Medical, is the existing business that Dave was talking about. Um, we provide electrotherapy products for pain management and the products are used uh, at home. Sinex Monitoring Solutions and Sinex Neurodiagnostic are two new business units that uh, we just established. The existing business is consisting primarily of electrotherapy devices that are used in the home. Electrical stimulation uh, that is for the most uh, used to provide uh, pain relief for patients uh, with, for instance, back pain uh, right after, after orthopedic surgery, that type of applications. And it's a well-established market of about half a billion dollars uh, a year. And uh, with only two competitors, um, we, are, we are making some headway in that market. The business model is that one of our sales representatives establishes a relationship with a doctor or physical therapy clinic. And all of our products, they require a prescription. So eventually, when a doctor decides to write a prescription for the patient, we provide the, uh, the product to the patient and with the uh, patient's demographics, our sales representative, uh, which are uh, located all over the country, they will uh, fax the paperwork to us and Sinex will then submit the uh, paperwork as, as a claim to the uh, health insurance company. Eventually, they'll pay a portion of it and the, uh, we, we obviously can put that money in the bank and the cycle starts over again because we are then able to pay the sales, sales representative his, his commission. This business has been around for 14 years now. I started the company 14 years ago and uh, <clears throat> we found that we had a, we had a great business model um, that, that, that competes very well, but couldn't really grow the business, primarily because of the long payment cycle with health insurance companies. So eventually we went public through a reverse merger in 2004. And as you can see, um, after we got a pipe investment of $1 million in, that was enough to spark the company to, uh, to quite a growth. The last graph here is only representative of uh, the first three quarters of the year. The first two are obviously public information. Uh, the third quarter is our estimate uh, or the guidance we have provided. And as you can see, with, uh, with additional revenue from the fourth quarter, it looks like we're going to continue that kind of growth. <clears throat> A few highlights of our business. Um, we, uh, we have seen between 40 and occasionally 100% growth every year since 2005 after we went public. We had um, last year about 4%, currently about 5% market share in a uh, $500 million a year current market um, with only two significant competitors. Um, our gross profit margins are very healthy, slightly better than you actually see in, uh, in many medical device companies. Um, and last year we had net income of uh, after tax of, of $2.3 million. We have a very strong balance sheet. Uh, we hardly owe any money. Um, and I believe our uh, shareholders' equity is uh, around $6 million right now. Long term, we expect, if you remember that, those, those three subsidiaries, we expect to use the current cash flow and hopefully increase cash flow from this um, e existing business to fuel business in two new business units. And um, we want to do that by adding more sales reps, 
because in, in this market, really what matters is not so much the technology, it's a well-established technology. We've got, we got great products. What, what matters the most is the relationship between the sales rep and the physician. We uh, have CE marking on our products now, so we've begun international distribution, and at some point we hope to have our products sold in every country throughout the world. And we continue to, to develop products for this particular market, uh, one of the main reasons is that it will allow us to keep uh, reducing cost of goods sold and, and therefore hopefully improving the gross profit margins. <clears throat> the history of the company, real quick. Um, I founded the company back in 96, uh, wholesaling uh, medical devices. We started developing our own products a few years after. In 2001, we started testing a direct sales force, and now we are up to having uh, about 120 sales reps and fitters uh, working to, to, to visit physicians across the country. And um, in 2003, we, we could say we had a complete line of products uh, for, uh, for this market. We went public in 2004, so it was a reverse merger, got uh, CE marking for our products in 2008, and in 2008, we also announced that uh, we wanted to, to get our stock listed on the American Stock Exchange rather than, rather than the bulletin board where we currently listed. And I'll talk about that in a, in a second. We moved into a new uh, 75,000 square feet uh, building for our corporate headquarters here early this year. These two new business units um, is probably where it, what the majority of our revenue is going to come from a few years out. The one, monitoring solutions. Uh, we believe we have found a way where we can detect uh, the amount of blood loss that happens during, during a surgery, which is something that uh, is not possible. A few companies have, have claimed they could, they could do it, but uh, nothing is being, being sold in, the, in that market because it, it hasn't worked until now. But we believe we have figured out how to do it. We can also detect uh, internal bleedings that a patient may have uh, in the recovery room after, after surgery. Two pretty, pretty big applications, and we have, we have filed a patent uh, for that, and the prototyping that we are currently working on is performing exceptionally well. Long term, for that company, we expect to acquire other either technologies or companies that, that have technology we can, that, that can be complementary to this and the cardiac monitoring market. But we're not going to do any of that until we get uh, about $5 a share, simply because the dilution would be too great. The other company, we already have some technology on that's used for stroke rehabilitation that we want to expand on and compete with some fairly large competitors that have EMG, EEG, diagnostic equipment. We believe we have hardware and a technology that's, that's better than what's out there and uh, expect to, to put in substantial engineering efforts uh, over the next couple of years. Again, <coughs> that's, that's where we see we could also add other technologies after we, um, we, we had a point where the existing business had uh, helped us uh, improve on the stock price. Long term, we want to build the company to become maybe a small version of a Medtronic or something like that, a, a significant me medical device player. And we want to do it by focusing on applications that have, like we have right now, very high gross profit margins. We only want to take calculated risks. Um, so when we, when we get into an area, we we only keep, keep spending the money as we see that, that things we do are successful. And <clears throat> depending on where we add, especially with the, the, the valuation of the company, we'll utilize uh, a line of credit, for instance, like we have right now, or when, when times are right, um, private equity. Our short-term goal is to get off the bulletin board. And I'll show you in a minute <laughs> why we, we're so interested in that and get listed on the American uh, Stock Exchange or NASDAQ if we can uh, have a valuation that's good enough for that. Currently, we don't have any need for private equity. We have a $3.5 million uh, line of credit in place that's uh, hardly, occasionally, but hardly being used. 
and we want to continue to drive revenue and earnings in the existing business to uh, uh, hopefully uh, get that, that higher valuation. A couple of years out, we expect to be engaged uh, quite a bit in acquiring technologies for the two new subsidiaries and introduce also the products we're developing ourselves into the hospital markets. Ownership structure is that I, um, I currently still own 60% of the stock and institution, owns about 10%, and the rest of the float is owned by, um, or, or which would be uh, less than 10 million shares uh, owned by uh, what we call the float. And, um, <clears throat> and a lot of those are, are for the most uh, uh, high net worth private individuals that's invested in the stock that very frequently have has contact with the company. The 30 million shares outstanding and uh, very limited overhang, primarily uh, employee stock options. Here's a picture of the new building we just moved into in Lone Tree, uh, Colorado. We had 75 employees uh, when we moved in in, in January and are now up to 180 employees in, in that building. 70 to 80 percent uh, filled up. And <clears throat> what I also wanted to talk about was the, uh, how the, the company's stock has developed. When we went public with the reverse merger, um, we uh, ran into the usual uh, pump and dump, and the stock got shorted right around the days when, when we got the pipe investment. And no matter how much money we spent on investor relations, nothing really happened. And then as you saw on the revenue growth, um, in about 06, 07, things really started picking up revenue-wise. Nothing really developed in terms of the stock price, but suddenly the market caught on to it. Several uh, larger shareholders got into it. Shortly after that, with that, that spike here, uh, we saw that the stock uh, was being shorted by more than a million shares. And with just a few... Um, uh, negative uh, press releases uh, we had out, the, the stock was so soft that it, it fell close to nothing again. So uh, one of the many examples of how volatile things are on the bulletin board. And you could probably imagine why we are so interested in getting off uh, the bulletin board and getting listed on, on the American Stock Exchange. Uh, we believe that's going to provide us with a lo lot more stability and uh, be justifying the, the, the kind of company we're building with, uh, or that we're building with real revenues, the company is profitable and has a healthy uh, cash flow. A few highlights. Um, historically, we've been growing 40 to 100 percent every year. We planted some seeds for the future with cardiac monitoring and neurodiagnostic, and we expect in 2010 to be growing at about the same rate we have seen before, and even in 2011, we expect to see the same kind of growth. Um, again, we'll, we'll, we keep trying to get listed on a better stock exchange, and until we have a better uh, appreciation of the stock, um, we have sufficient capital to keep, keep operating and improving with the kind of numbers that, that, that you're seeing right now. Uh, just recently, um, we believe we significantly have improved the way we communicate with the market in terms of the SEC disclosures, etc., by changing to a uh, law firm that specializes in, uh, in healthcare. Uh, we have added a new CFO uh, that has a very strong background, not only in healthcare, but uh, smaller public companies. We launched these two new business units, and the, uh, the, the, the prototype testing for the blood volume monitor is looking e extremely good at this point in time. Uh, another thing that uh, I didn't get to mention, if you should be interested in this stock, uh, is that 90% uh, of our revenue is recurring monthly, either monthly rentals or supplies that are sent out to patients on a monthly basis. So we have a, a business model that's somewhat similar to, uh, to the razor blade business, but with a very high gross profit margins. That's, provide, that's what's providing us with the stability in, in the business and, and a very high degree of predictability for, for future revenue. But this is what I need you to, uh, or would like you to remember when, uh, when you get back home. This is the stock symbol. 
that we'd like uh, for you to remember and check out. Unfortunately, I don't offer the same thing as many of the other companies here today. I'm only here today and uh, therefore uh, have not, not set up a booth uh, and, and therefore have uh, given, given you a chance to, to come, come ask me questions. But I'll be here for the next couple of hours until about six uh, before I travel home to, to Colorado. So hopefully I get a chance to, to talk to those of you that have, have questions. <laughs>